Crowds out Saturday commemorating an historic day in the civil rights struggle, the March on Washington. The 50th anniversary is coming up on Wednesday. President Obama will mark it with a speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, the very spot where Martin Luther King changed history. ABC's Byron Pitts takes us back. It started with a press conference that barely made news, but boldly made history. We are calling for a non-violent, peaceful march on Washington. The year 1963, Jim Crow was alive. The sting of segregation could kill. When a 34-year-old Negro preacher had the audacity to dream aloud. That we are determined to be free in 63. Determined, perhaps, but not fully optimistic. Organizers hoped for 100,000. A quarter million showed up. Dr. the King, they are. And on August 28, 1963, not a soul had a clue how it might turn out. There was a fence that crossed this area. Edith Lee Payne was 12. She had traveled by bus nine hours with her mother to be there on the mall. A photographer capturing her in one of the most famous photos from the march. What did you think of Dr. King? I held on to every word that he said, just like everyone else that was here. It was billed as a march for jobs and freedom, drawing the fateful, the curious, the famous. And people watched live on television from around the world, both drawn by what might happen at the Lincoln Memorial and still reeling from what did on the streets of Birmingham weeks earlier. With all the bloodshed and bombings in the South, many of Dr. King's inner circle thought a march in Washington might be a waste of time. We felt that this was a picnic on the park and that uh, the real action was in the South. Former U.S. Ambassador Andrew Young was one of King's top aides. I was going to watch it on television and Dr. King called a couple of days ahead and said, you and Gene get on a plane and come on up here. This is important. Yeah. Congressman John Lewis, back then the newly appointed chairman of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, was already there. When we met with President Kennedy earlier, he was so afraid there would be violence. How long can we be patient? Like King, Lewis was one of the march organizers and speakers. We want to be free now. At what point did you recognize it as an historic moment? When I stepped to the podium, I saw hundreds and hundreds of young people, and I said to myself, this is it. The civil rights movement was, in many ways, a youth movement. Dr. King was 34, Lewis 23. You were still a kid. I grew up when you had been sitting on a lunch counter stool, and someone walk up and spit on you, or pour hot water or hot coffee on you, and you said you're committed to nonviolence. You had to grow up. The going of freedom rights in 1961, the same year that President Barack Obama was born, and to be beaten, you had to grow up. So by the time of the March on Washington, I was 23, but I was an older person. An old soul, as they say. I was an old soul. They all were. Old souls pushing for a new America. It was now left to one man, the final speaker of the day. Dr. King, was he nervous? Not at all. He was determined not to speak more than 10 minutes, and he did. He finished his prepared address in just about nine minutes. But he wasn't finished. Sitting behind Dr. King was famed gospel singer Mahalia Jackson, who shouted to her friend, tell him about the dream. It's a theme he'd used before in smaller settings. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. Why do you think he made that transition to talk about the dream? As a preacher, there's something we, we, we call being led by the Spirit. The Spirit told him to lay that paper down and just go for it. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And it's a dream that still lives on 50 years later. Edith Lee Payne drove to D.C. from Detroit for this week's commemoration, and she brought her granddaughters with her. I wanted my granddaughters to see what I saw 50 years ago. 
to stand up for what's right. The struggles then and those to come draw John Lewis back as well. You still come here often? Oh, yes. Sir. Why? I, because I come here to reflect, to remember. Remembering his old friend and the day that both made history and changed it. This spot is almost sacred. Dr. King must be looked upon as one of the founding fathers of the new America. Lewis He's believes America has come far in 50 years. Many issues still exist. Progress, he says, just a down payment on the dream. What was at stake that day? The future of America as one nation, as one people, was at stake. He helped hold us together. Is there one moment from that day that sticks out in your mind most? He started saying, let freedom reign. Let freedom reign from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom reign from every mole hill of Mississippi. From every mountainside. Let freedom reign. And I think people all across America, in their hearts, believe that freedom should reign for everybody. Free at last! Free at last! Thank God!